Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News on Now You Know. This is episode 12. Let's get things started. Okay. Uh, Tesla has added a 100D to its lineup. Or it's about to. It's, re it's really close. They uh -huh. have the badges for it. Oh, they have the badges. So what that means is you you soon should be able to buy a 100D car. So that's going to sort of um, fill, I think, that gap between the... Um, oh, the P. Right, because they have the P100D, and Ludicrous, this, which costs a lot. And this is the 100D. Right, so it should bring so down the price. So can we explain what that means? So the performance edition of the car mm -hmm. means that you have a bigger motor in the front and a bigger motor in the back. Is yes, that correct? and so you can go... You can accelerate faster. I see, and, and um, that adds a lot of cost to the car, and it also kind of diminishes the range a little bit. Right, it's a little bit less efficient, and also I mean, if you're what accelerating. what does the D mean? The D stands for dual drive, and all of the most recent cars have it. So that means there's two motors, one in the front, one in the back, and you're getting all-wheel drive, basically. All-wheel drive. Um, cool. So 100 D means you have a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. This is the largest battery pack that you they can make. make, so it should go the furthest. This is exciting news. And I mean, the, the estimates are between somewhere between like 330 to 300, and some people think that it could be like 360 or 70 miles. Wow, in an S. Which would be crazy. Yeah, obviously yeah. a little bit less for the X because it weighs a little bit more, but. Right. Wow, that's awesome news. All right, well, Tesla launches this cool new program in Europe called Drive to Believe Challenge. Um, and what it means is that for one week, if you join this challenge and they accept you, mm -hmm. you can swap your car, your ICE car, yeah. with a Tesla Model S and drive a Tesla Model S for free for a week to check it out. Wow. And so this is all throughout Europe. It's going to go to the end of the year. You have to be 25 years or, or of age or older to join. You go to the web, uh, the Tesla website, which we'll put a link to down below, and you fill out a form. And I don't know how they choose you. It might be lottery. It might be random. I don't know. Um, but if you get chosen... Mm -hmm. You're going to be driving through Europe in a Model S. Wow. That's cool. So for a week, so you get to sort of try it out. Yeah, put it you through real-world conditions. Yeah, put it through supercharging and stuff like that. That I think sounds it's, really exciting. I think it's really smart. That's really smart. Because I think you need to drive a Tesla to understand it. And yes. th this way you get to really not just do a you know half-hour test drive with right. a guy sitting next to you, but drive it how you'd like to drive it and see if you like, like it. Toyota has claimed that it has achieved an electric car battery breakthrough. Um, Whoa, what's this breakthrough? So, I, it sounds really good on paper, Yeah. Um, but don't get too excited. Why? So they think that they, a can, they, they say that they can get up to a 15% greater range on a battery, which sounds awesome. So they've got some new materials or new science? So, I mean, the thing is, battery technology, lithium-ion battery technology, has been steadily increasing, thanks to Tesla and Panasonic, mm -hmm. since the um, Roadster release up until the first Model S, there was a 40% increase in uh, battery technology, so that is uh, energy density. Right. And then from the Model S to now, there's been another increase of 30%. Wow! So, I mean, this 15% that they're touting, first of all, they haven't achieved it yet. They think oh. that it's a possible thing. So, the way that it, they, they've done is basically, you have a battery, mm -hmm. you have two electrodes on either side, okay. an anode and a cathode, mm -hmm. and then you have an electrolyte in between. Okay. Um, and until now, you couldn't see the electrolyte in between when it's discharging or charging or anything like that. Um, and so what Toyota has done is that now you can sort of see the electrolyte and you can observe it, and that they hopefully should be able to figure more stuff out about electrolytes, which is important. Can I point out, though, that according to what I read, they only put four engineers on this project. Right. So there's it's four, four people working on this project. But doesn't te doesn't uh, Toyota employ over 300,000 employees? Yes, three over 330,000 employees. So they thought this was so important, they should put four guys on it. Right. I yeah. Well, I'm not that impressed. Yeah, I'm not either. Uh, what I am kind of impressed about is that Hyundai has announced in 2017 they are announcing their Ionic electric car. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be the most efficient car ever rated by the EPA. Sweet. So this will bump BMW's i3 to 
down a peg. Wow. Um, yeah, so it basically will get 124 miles of range mm -hmm. on a 28 kilowatt hour battery. So that's a pretty tiny battery, but pretty decent range. Um, but because it's so efficient, it gets 150 miles per gallon equivalent in the city, 112 on the highway. So it gets combined 136 miles per gallon equivalent. Uh, so what does MPGE mean? Well, I think it's a way for people to transition their understanding of how efficient a car is. So normally, you know, you get in a car and you're like, oh, I get 24 miles to the gallon. I get 16 miles to the gallon. You can compare those two. Mm -hmm. So you can't really compare an electric car to a gas car, right? Because you're like, well, I don't use gas. So mm -hmm. what they've done is the EPA has figured out how to use an equivalent. So in this case, the Ionic gets 136 miles per gallon equivalent of gasoline, showing you how efficient it is. So basically that gives you some idea of, wow, I could drive 136 miles on one gallon of gasoline in this car, even though it doesn't use gasoline. I know that's confusing. That is confusing. Um, it's This car has been in Korea since last year. It's uh, just been introduced to Europe this month. Okay. And next quarter, so the beginning quarter of 2017, it'll be introduced in the US with a starting price of $37,900. At least that's what we think the price will be. Interesting. Um, so the other interesting thing is that Hyundai plans to release four more electric cars by 2020, one of them being this Ionic with an increased range of over 200 miles. Pretty cool. So I have a new electric car story for us. I love hearing about new electric so cars. This is a new electric car. Yeah. So Next EV is launching a new brand called NIO or NIO. And its first electric car will be a 100 megawatt supercar. Ooh, a supercar. So I mean, what that means is it can output a megawatt? of electricity? What? I think this car can output around a megawatt. Okay. But I mean like, so this is a supercar. This is like a Ferrari of electric vehicles. Oh, so it's expensive? Y yes. Yeah, you could say that. Uh, will it cost about the same as this car? Uh, no, no. It'll cost about a million dollars. Oh, it's a supercar. It's a supercar. Oh, okay. This is a gotcha. super, super, supercar. Gotcha. It looks Amazing. Um, so there's this race course in Germany. I can't pronounce it. Yeah, isn't it called like the Green Mile, the Green uh, Hell? Green Hell. Green Hell or something. Um, yeah, it's beaten the electric lap. Yeah, check out time. this footage. This is amazing. I mean, J Jesse and I were just drooling watching this car make its paces around the, the, the laps. Yeah, I think Crazy the, the coolest thing about it is that like it's quiet. So like they have a scene where like they're just like showing a leaf mm -hmm. and then like the leaf goes. <laughs> you know, flutters, but it's just, and you just hear like a whoosh, you know? There's no like, <gasps> it's just. <sighs> so what's its top speed? So its top speed is 194 miles an hour. 194? What's our top speed in Sparky? Could we race it? I think it's. 155, like, I Yeah, think? it's pretty fast. We've so never this, this can that. go faster. Okay. So what's its range like? So it should have 265 miles of range. Nice. So that's respectable. And not that, not that you'd be getting groceries in this car. No. No, oh. I don't. Uh, you can get there fast. You could get to the grocery store faster than anyone else. And yes. what kind of uh, charge time? Um, they think that it should recharge in about 45 minutes. That's, so that's awesome. It sounds like a supercar. I'm going like to start a... saving my million dollars for that. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> um, interesting thing I found out is that um, the Neo name brand, um, when translated into Chinese, it's going to be Wai Lai, which translates as blue sky coming, which is kind of a cool concept that like, we're bringing you clean right. transportation. I know. It's not only badass, it's also super clean. That is so cool. That's super great. All right, so the Tesla Powerwall 2 is probably going to be pretty popular in Sweden. Why is that? Well, those of you who live in Sweden will get a $5,000 incentives to install battery packs. What? From the government? So, from the government. So, Aww. I mean, this is Swedish essentially... Government, you rock. Right, so this is essentially bringing down the cost of a power wall, including installation and everything in Sweden, to 3,000 US dollars. Wow, so basically they're covering the cost, about 60% of the cost. Yeah. Wow. So why is the Swedish government doing this? So they have a program, um, and basically what they want to do is Sweden has a goal of becoming fossil free by 2040. That's awesome. So the, the program will run until the end of 2019 um, nice. for the battery packs. And now the, the interesting thing about this is that um, there are other battery pack home solution things. Um, 
but from, they're from different companies. From different companies, but they are much more expensive, oh. at least for what you're getting in terms of kilowatt hours. Right. I do want to mention another cool thing about Sweden. There's about 2,000 Teslas right now in Sweden, and Tesla has partnered with a local utility there. So um, they've put all of their superchargers, and there's about 20 right now in Sweden, on this network that is powered by renewable energy 100%. So if you were charging your car right now on a supercharger in Sweden, you're getting your power from renewable energy. On top of that, if you charge your car at home in Sweden, a Tesla, you're getting your energy for free on the same utility that Tesla has worked with. If you're driving in Sweden with a Tesla, you're driving on 100% renewable energy pretty much all the time if you're charging at home or a supercharger. 100% free renewable energy. Yeah. So let's move to Sweden. Let's move to Sweden. Six major countries have announced that they are going to imminently phase out coal-powered electricity. The latest country is Finland. So way to go, Finland. So the countries are Canada, Germany, mm -hmm. France, the Netherlands, Austria, and now Finland. Some interesting in information I didn't know about mm -hmm. Canada only has about 7% of their power generated by coal right now. Wow. And they plan on phasing it all out by 2030. Yeah. Way to go, Canadians. So how much does, like, say, the United States use in... We get 33% of our electricity from coal. Yuck. Yeah, a lot of it. Um, and there's no plans at the moment to phase it out. In fact, with the new Trump administration, he's planning on trying to boost that. So we've got to start working even harder. Um, but some good news, France will be phasing out their coal by 2023 which is just around the corner. Wow. Uh, Finland, which is the latest country to join, will phase it out by 2030, and they currently get 12% of their energy from coal. Okay. So, I mean, it shows that it can be done. These are major countries, yeah. and they're all doing it, so let's do it. Let's do it. So last week, we talked about that Tesla had finally merged with Solar City. I'm so excited. It's awesome. But now, I think that now that we've sort of uh, gotten over the excitement of that, yeah, what does that mean? What does it mean? Yeah. So, I mean, this means that it is the world's first and only fully integrated sustainable energy company. Right. Yeah, I think you have to say that again. It's the world's first and only fully sustainable integrated energy company. So, basically, what they're selling you is sustainable energy and ways to use it. So they're selling you, they're going to be selling you the solar panels, they're yep. going to be selling you the batteries to store the power, yep. they're going to be selling you cars that can run off the power of the wow. solar panels. So no other company does that? No. Wow. So I mean, Why it, didn't anyone think of that before? It's, it seems like a genius idea. I mean, it's, it is a genius it's, idea. It's like, and he pulled it off. Everyone said he couldn't do it. Couldn't Every do single it. step of the way, they said, oh, you can't make a car. You couldn't you can't, merge you can't the two merge. companies. He's blah, blah, blah. And he's done it every done single it. step of the way. It's really remarkable. I mean, and not only is he just selling it to, like, homes and beautiful solar roofs and mm -hmm. everything like that, but also coming up with bigger solar installations with battery packs. So it takes the place of a of a traditional either coal-fired power plant or a natural gas power you know, power plant. Mm -hmm. The next story is about the fact that uh, Solar City has converted an entire island to solar energy. Wow. And we have the video showing you right here, the the island of Tapau, um, which has about 600 people living on it. Okay. Um, they've installed, Tesla has installed a 1.4 megawatt system. It's not huge because obviously it's only 600 people, yep. but it's six megawatt hours of energy storage, which means that they can operate for three full days without sunlight. Wow. Um, and it only takes seven hours to fully charge the system. Wow. So this is 60 Tesla power packs. What I find really interesting, if you watch this video, it's just for a quick video, it shows how much diesel fuel would have had to have been used and has been used to power the island up until now. And they right. have to ship that diesel fuel across the ocean right. to here to burn it to power the island. Now the island is 100% renewable. So, I mean, I think it's really awesome. And I mean, if you're looking at the the video, it, the solar field looks pretty big, um, but it's really not that big. It's very small. I mean, it's... Yeah, look at that picture that we're showing you right now. So, I mean, that little circle is where it is, and that's the entire island. I mean, it's a huge island. It's just this little boop. Right. Little tiny It speck. powers the entire thing. It powers the whole thing, all right. the people that live on it. The amazing thing is that it's really not that much electricity. Right. And there's no point in really having a big power plant. Right. Because it's so small, you know, diesel generators were basically all they needed. Mm -hmm. And you can quickly replace that with, with a solar installation. I know, it's so cool. Now, you were pointing out something about wind the other day. Wind turbines are producing somewhere between... 
two and three megawatts of power. Wow! So one wind speed. turbine on that island, if it was getting enough wind, if I don't it was getting it enough is, wind, could power the entire could island. Power, could power the entire island. Wow. So I mean, that's it, it's an interesting uh, way to sort of see because usually when you see a solar installation, it's either really small on a house or it's really really big. Um, this is sort of like almost equivalent. I mean, mm -hmm. if you doubled it, you'd get a, a modern like wind one they put up now. A wind turbine that they put up now. The smaller ones, though, about the same size. So it's interesting. So you can see the solar and and wind's equivalency. Interesting. Because I've never imagined that that wind would be that efficient. It's just an interesting thought. Yeah, no, that's cool. Okay, so SpaceX has been talking with the FCC um, about providing internet. I think SpaceX is a space company, though. They they don't run cables and stuff. You must be wrong. Well, uh, they they want to provide internet to the entire world. Again, you'd have to run cables around the No, no, no. This, is, this would be all done with satellites. So what their plan is, is that they could have 100% coverage of the entire world with, uh, with 4,425 geosynchronous satellites. Wow, that's a lot of satellites. It's a lot of satellites. They're, uh, they're pretty big satellites. They're not micro satellites. They're, they weigh each about 850 pounds. So it's not gigantic, but it's, it's certainly not like a, like a smartphone or whatever. Each one would cover an ellipse of about two kilometers. Of the planet's surface? Right. So, oh, I see. Um, and it would just constantly, you could get up to about uh, one gigabit of, which is, which is darn fast. Per satellite? Or... One gigabit of coverage. Per person? No matter where you are, yeah. Oh my gosh. You get a gigabit. Now, which is, this sounds prohibitively expensive. How, how, I don't understand how you could afford to do this. So they think that the entire project would cost about $10 billion. To give the entire planet internet? To give the entire planet internet. That's everywhere. You just, Ooh. you know, pull up your smartphone, you've got internet. Where are you? In the middle of the ocean, you've got internet. That's just... It's cuckoo. unbelievable. It's crazy. I like this quote here. Once fully deployed, the SpaceX system will pass over virtually all parts of the Earth's surface and therefore, in principle, have the ability to provide ubiquitous global service. Every time Elon comes up with an idea, it's just more it's, amazing. It, I mean, that could be groundbreaking. And he, be... So he filed papers with the FCC, so like they're really thinking of doing this. Right. So, I mean, this could provide, I mean, this in one swoop is basically taking care of um, internet for every remote location. So this on would Earth. mean SpaceX could become an internet company. They could be an internet company. Oh my gosh! Wow, I, I have to go take a nap. I know, pretty exciting. <laughs> wow. And lastly, a story that I can wrap my head around, which is that Tesla has just released some new apparel. Look Sweet. at these cool new shirts. And I think to make this fun, mm -hmm. we should offer a free shirt to the best comment below. And I think the comment should be what shirt you like and why you like it. We should be able to get this uh, to them in time for Christmas, huh? Maybe. I'll do my best. It's a pretty sweet Christmas gift to yourself. Yeah. I know which one I do. want. Oh, yeah? Which one is that? Well, I can't tell you. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Good luck, folks. And thank you for watching. Thank you so much for watching. Now you know. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching Now You Know. I hope you liked this episode. If you did, go down below and hit subscribe. It's free. It doesn't mean you have to pay any money to YouTube or anything like that. It just lets them send you a notification whenever we have a new episode so you know that there's something fun to watch. Thanks.